but through the times I've acquired knowledge on various <laughs> A sort of stark, sterile, do-it-yourself alternative to the sort of inspirational posters other teachers would willingly hang in their classrooms to make it seem a more loving, caring environment, with pictures of seagulls flying in the clouds and kids fishing and dolphins in outer space. <laughs> I could tell from this that the teacher of this classroom was a straightforward, tell it like it is, solid, meat and potatoes kind of person. <laughs> No flowery poeticism or pompous flourish needed. There was a man sitting at a computer in the front right corner of the room, and I took my seat in the back left corner of the room. I sat there, and my brain, atrophied and still slightly comatose from the pleasant boredom and lazy tedium of summer, was in a few minutes' time snapped to attention. Plastic wheels cracked like thunder against the cold linoleum floor as the swivel chair was dismounted, and from it arose a man of formidable stature, clutching a blue plastic thermos in one hand and a black whiteboard marker in the other. He surveyed his new batch of students and made sure from that point on we'd never forget the name that would long ripple throughout the hallways in excited whispers. Mr. Patterson. <laughs> You're probably wondering why I'm up here giving a speech about this, Mr. Patterson. Frankly, so am I. <laughs> His first order of business as my geometry teacher was to move my seat from the back corner to the front row, saying that he wanted to keep an eye on me, and asked if I was a troublemaker. I can't remember exactly what my response was, but he didn't like it, and instructed the student in the neighboring seat to keep an eye on me. <laughs> This was just the beginning. Our personalities have continued scraping against each other for the rest of the year. I asked questions that were completely irrelevant to the class, but still warranted lengthy answers, and once gotten to spend a good ten minutes turning an isosceles triangle into a drawing of a pirate on the whiteboard. <laughs> on multiple occasions, he sent me to the dean's office, most often about the ten watches I used to wear on my right arm. Mr. Shane never saw any problem with them, which always seemed to bother Mr. Patterson. <laughs> but, thanks to the recent installment of the Helgeson regime, the watches were taken away the second day of this school year. <laughs> He bugged me about my hair, and I him about his luxurious strands. <laughs> he shared with me nuggets of wisdom, such as, Don't make the funny noises, I'll put your head under water. <laughs> and he encouraged me to do my work, for he said if I didn't, he'd get my classmates to put my face on the back of my head. <laughs> He also encouraged me to do well in exams, saying that if I'd spent as much time studying as I did putting on makeup, I might have been more fun. <laughs> yes, we had every intention of making the year interesting for each other. But throughout all the little clashes and scraps, we were generating sort of bizarre energy between us. A strange and twisted bond as mysterious as the ever-present blue thermos. <laughs> a mutant form of symbiotic relationship, friendship that was fueled by mostly good-natured attacks with subtly deranged joy. It was the wonderfully sordid blossoming of an odd and peculiar Tom and Jerry style relationship. <laughs> We'd set ourselves up and knock each other down and we just came back for more. Whether it was either of us not knowing when to quit, or just the fact that school was still in session, it didn't even matter. Mathematics, a class I had always dreaded, had become, for one sick reason or another, no matter how crude or unhealthy it may seem, one of my favorite times of the day. <laughs> the class and curriculum had nothing to do with it, as I realized that I genuinely liked this guy. Now, those of you who know me well enough can tell that this is not a common occurrence. I'm something of a misanthrope. Generally speaking, I don't like people very much. <laughs> but there was something about this man, this Mr. Patterson, that excited me and intrigued me. He was always up to something, 
and he always seemed to be having fun doing it, even if it was at my expense. <laughs> now, I'm just one of the most recent out of the hundreds of students that this man has taught. And now that he's done teaching here, why am I up here telling you about it? Is this justified? Was I his best student? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> but was I a good student? No. <laughs> I rarely took notes in class, and I spent the in-class work time drawing, and though I managed to escape geometry with a somewhat satisfactory final grade, I can tell you now with utmost cert sincerity and certainty that in ten years' time, I will have absolutely no idea how, when, or why I should ever possibly divide the cosine, or the reason why y equals mx plus b. <laughs> but what I will remember in 10, 20, 40 years' time is the guy that I never expected to become, but has become, in some contorted way, one of my favorite teachers, Harry Patterson. He's a character. Enjoy your retirement, Patty. We'll miss you. <laughs>